Hi, I'm Elizabeth Robbins, and I want to share with you today all the materials that I use in my paintings. So let's first talk about the, the paints and the solvent mediums that I use. I use Gamblin products. Their website is gamblincolors.com, and the reason why I love working with Gamblin is because they are a small company. They're great to work with. I can get a hold of either Dave or Scott right away. They answer my emails. Anytime I have a problem with a color or a varnish or something like this, they get right back to me. They've got great video tutorials on their website. They are uh, really good about supporting artists like myself. They uh, also create products that are healthier for us as oil painters and also better for the environment. And so that's why I love working with Gamblin. I used to use Winsor Newton for years. Those of you that have followed me for a long time know that I used, I used to use Winsor Newton. They're still good paints, um, but I'm now using Gamblin. So let's go over and talk about the paints that I use. Uh, first of all, let me mention about my palette. This is just a cheap um, 14 by 18 picture frame that I found at the dollar store. And I've just backed it with a, a neutral gray. So when I'm through painting for the day, I can just use you know, a paint scraper that you can find at the hardware store and I just scrape that all off and I'm good to go. I do not like the white palettes. Everything I mix on white will look uh, um, darker than it will appear on my painting. It will also look warmer than when it will appear on my painting because you are judging that color against white, the lightest value and a really cold color. So I prefer to mix on a neutral palette. This is just a neutral gray. It's not too warm, it's not too cold. It's just kind of middle of the road. So let me show you which paints I use. And if you look at the palette, this is the way I set up my palette all the time. And if you, you know, don't look at white right here, but you can see that this is the warm colors on the color wheel, the yellows, oranges, and reds. Across the top, I put my earth tones. And across here, I put my cool colors, the dark transparent colors. So I have warm, with the exception of white, cool, and earth tones. And this is how I set up my palette every single time. So titanium white is the white that I use, cadmium lemon, cadmium yellow medium, and between these two, you can see that this is a cooler yellow. It leans a little bit more to the green. And this is an, a warmer yellow. It leans a little bit more to the orange. So I have a cool yellow and a warm yellow. This is cadmium orange. This is cadmium red medium. This is cadmium red deep. And again, the same thing with the red. I, this is a warmer red and this is a cooler red because this red is leaning closer to the orange and this red is leaning closer to a violet. And my earth tones are yellow ochre. This is Indian yellow, which is just a really beautiful, warm, transparent color that uh, if I ever need to warm up a mix just slightly, that Indian yellow works really well for that. This is raw umber. This is a very cool color. Of my earth tones, this is the coolest. And this is transparent earth red. I love this color. I use it a lot in my dark mixes. It's just a color that I've become dependent upon, so that's something I definitely uh, could, would have a hard time painting without. It's similar to burnt sienna, other than, except for that it's a little uh, more transparent, a little bit cleaner than burnt sienna. So along here I have alizarin. Uh, this is permanent alizarin. This is ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, viridian, and ivory black. And so I have, of the primaries, the yellow, I have a warm and cool yellow. The reds, I have warm and cool reds, where these are a little bit warmer, and this is a cooler red. The blue, this is a warmer blue, and this is a cooler blue. So I have warm and cool of each of the primaries. Okay, so that's my palette. And again, that's how I set it up the whole time. So the medium that I use is Neo McGilp. It is um, a gel, and I just put it in a little cup and place it on my palette. And I only use the medium 
uh, in the later stages of the painting to thin down a paint if, I, if my paints feel a little stiff or I want a paint uh, in the shadows a little thinner, I'll use a little bit of the Neoma Gilp. It has a longer open time than Liquin. Liquin dries faster than Neoma Gilp, and Liquin is really toxic where the Neoma Gilp is healthier for you. Here in Utah, paints dry really fast. And um, I, I mean, I could, when I used to use Liquin, I'd have a painting dry the next day. So I do like to paint, um, use the paint where I can have a little bit more open time because I am an a la prima painter. I want those paints to stay wet a little bit longer so I can manipulate edges. So I, I am loving the Neil McGilp as my medium. The solvent I use is Gamsol. So again, a healthier alternative to mineral spirits or turpentine. I wouldn't even use that if I were you. So I have it just in a, in a little container next to my palette. And I use Gamsol in the beginning stages of painting when I just want to thin down the paint to washes and just kind of put a wash over the canvas. And then of course I use it to clean my paints. So let's also talk about uh, the brushes I use. So the brushes I use are by Royal Brush Company. And this is the Sable Tech series. The Sable Tech series was de de developed, oh, I don't know, maybe five, eight, ten, I can't remember how long ago. But they are the replacement for the mongoose hairbrushes that we used to use that were so wonderful. But mongoose are on the endangered watch list, so you can't get those brushes anymore. So this is a synthetic hair, and what that means is that no animals were harmed in the making of this particular brush. So it has a curly filament and a straight filament together, which gives it a really nice body. So let me put these down here. I use a variety of sizes, and these are probably the, the workhorse of my paintings. Um, I probably paint about, I would say maybe 80 to 85% of my paintings with these particular brushes. Um, so I'll start with bigger brushes, and as I move into the detail, I'll move to smaller brushes. I use a fan brush sometimes. The fan allows me to quiet down brush strokes or to create some interesting edges, so that's a fun brush to use. I also use uh, hog bristle brushes, but this is, a, again, a synthetic bristle. This is the Vienna line. There's lots of hog bristle brushes out there that you can use. Robert Simmons are really good. The, the Trakel brushes are awesome. So um, this is just a variety of sizes with that. I have a wipeout tool that uh, this is for when I um, sign my name. I use this a lot to sign my name. If I have a mix that is wrong, and instead of trying to put more paint on top of a wrong mix, I can use this wipeout tool to scratch that out and put in a, a correct mix, so that's fun. I also have, uh, these are chip brushes from the hardware store. I think this is like $2.99, I can't remember. But I'll have a variety of sizes. I use this also to maybe wash big passages of paint in the beginning. So there's that. And a palette knife, which um, comes in handy for creating uh, large mixes of paint on my palette or for veins of leaves. Let's see what else. Uh, this is also a Sable Tech, but it's a longer hair uh, bristle. This is the 5590 series. So you can see how much longer, let me put that right there. You can see how much longer that hair is compared to that one. So these are called Brights, and this is a flat. And I use that brush again to create soft passages of paint. Whenever I want to have more exciting brushwork or have um, paint that's a little bit more textural, I'll use a bristle brush because that I can scoop up paint and really put on a lot of paint that way. If I want a, a passage of paint that's a little bit quieter and not so much texture, I will move to the Sable, the Sable Tech brush because this brush will allow me to create softer um, passages of paint. Okay. So I think that's all the brushes. Let me move this over. 
Well, let me talk about um, the, the canvases I use. So I get my canvas through newtraditionsartpanels.com. I've got a website and they're actually here about 10 minutes. They're in Utah. They're about 10 minutes from where I live. And um, this is the C12 canvas. I like the weave of the C12. It's, it's got a little bit of a tooth, but not so much that that tooth interferes with the intimacy of my paintings. And this is an oil prime canvas. Here in Utah, um, the paint, it's so dry that if I, I've tried to paint on an alkyd primed canvas and the paint just sucks in really, really quickly, I don't like acrylic toned canvases for the same reason that the paint just sucks in and the paint doesn't uh, flow very easily. So I do like the oil primed linen, the C12. The, uh, I also like the L600, which is a lead primed 600. It's a little bit smoother of a weave, so that's a nice um, canvas. Um, I'm also, I have been using the, the Centurion linen that comes in a pad in these panels. I don't use the Centurion uh, linen for large paintings, you know, over a 1620 because they're only mounted on this thin board. And I once ordered the 24 by 30 to see what it was like. And it's just, it's just too flimsy. I wouldn't trust it to send to a gallery. But these are great for little studies. They're really inexpensive. You can buy them from any, you know, Cheap Joe's, Jerry's Arama, Diplick, anything like that. So these make for um, great little paintings. They're all, it's also an oil prime linen, okay? So that's the linen that I paint on. Let me show you how I tone my canvas. A lot of my paintings have really dark backgrounds. And if I start with a white canvas, which I do sometimes, but it helps me get to where I want to be faster if I tone the canvas first. If I want to do a high key painting with a lighter background, then I don't bother toning the canvas. But I'm just going to take a large brush. I'm going to dip it in that Neoma Gilt. I'm going to pick up some raw umber. And I'm just going to place this on here randomly. Then I can take a paper towel and I just rub it over the canvas. And I don't worry too much about making sure it's perfect, that there's no streaks. And then I let it dry. And again, here in Utah, this is going to be dry tomorrow. The reason why I use the Neo McGilp to tone my canvas rather than the Gamsol is because I need, I need this layer to dry permanently to be set. And if I tone it with Gamsol, tomorrow when I come paint, that Gamsol hasn't set, it hasn't cured. And as I paint, that raw umber will lift and blend into the color that I'm applying. If I'm painting a yellow rose or a red rose, that raw umber is going to seep into that color, and I don't want that. So the Neo McGilp dries, and it cures, and it's set. So when I paint on top of this, nothing will come up and contaminate the next layer of colors. Okay. At the end of the day, I might take all of that paint that's on my palette, mix it into one big muddy pile, and tone two or three canvases so that that paint's not wasted and I've got canvases that are ready to paint on.